Daddy, we give you glory, we give you honor and adoration. Thank you for your love that is shed abroad our hearts. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you that while we are yet sinners, you loved us. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your care. Glory be to your name, Father, in Jesus. Name. Amen. It is all for your love that we are what we are. Blessed be your holy name, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We invite you right now, Father, that you will come and take your rightful position. Amen. Minister unto us according to your plan and program for us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have your way in our midst, O Lord. We surrender in your hands. We cover every one of us with the blood of Jesus. We cover the entire area and the auditorium with the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray that as you look upon us, you see nothing but the blood. Amen. Let the blood cleanse in and usher us into your presence. Amen. That you have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome, your brother and your sister, and say welcome to the new month. Welcome to the new month. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Before we sit down, I want us to talk to God. How many of us have been able to read the post I put out for the month? How many of us have been able to go through it? It talks about the love of God being a channel through which God epitomizes his love in our lives through his miracles. I want us to cry to God and say, Father. Father. And say, Father. Father. Let my life. Let my life. Showcase, Showcase the expression of your love in the name of Jesus. Shall we talk to God right now? Just talk to God that our lives will stand out. Our lives will stand out in every realm, in every area. That our lives will stand out. That the love of God will be epitomized in our lives. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Secondly, I want us to cry to God and say, Father, Father I command the month of November to bring forth the manifestation of God's love upon my life and family, upon the church of God. Shall we talk to God? Shall we talk to God? Shall we talk to God? Father God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, we declare and declare that this month we showcase and bring forth the manifestation of your love in our lives. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And so shall it be in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shall we be seated? You are welcome in your Father's house. The Lord's name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we continue in that message. And the topic this morning says, provoking the manifestation of God's law. Provoking the manifestation of God's law. 
in our previous messages we have seen that the love of God is universal the love of God is available to everyone at least at the point of salvation that love is extended to all of us and we become his own children as we are engrafted into the spiritual Israel but we have already also seen that there are different dimensions of that law and so while we all are children of God and we have seen and experienced the love of God some have gone ahead to experience different realms of the love of God praise the Lord and hence we can see it that we can see the manifestation in the life of many and why some are yet to press forward to move into that realm praise the Lord the Lord will take us to that realm in Jesus name so there are certain foundations that we have and that is that the love of God is the springboard for the demonstration of his miracles as we key in into it we will be able to see and receive the miracles of God two that the, 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 the love of God attracts his mercy and favor and it attracts his mercy and favor upon our life we see that the foundation of his faithfulness divine revelation and fellowship comes out of our love of God praise the Lord Amen. Amen. Amen so today we want to look at how can we then if this love is available as you look at this topic provoking the love of the manifestation of his love in our lives the topic suggests that this love is available to all of us however while it is available it may not be active in some cases and therefore we must take steps to provoke the manifestation thereby making the love of God very active very experiential in our lives praise the Lord Amen. Amen so what are these steps that we can take before we talk about it there is a saying that says that everything that has value has a price tag is that correct yes. that everything that has value has a price tag and I look at the love of God as an invaluable gift that Lord has given to all of us it's an invaluable entity of the spiritual realm that every one of us must covet must try to receive is priceless praise the Lord and that is why the scripture makes it clear that the height we cannot reach to it the depth we cannot reach to it the width we cannot go around it it's so wide it's so high it's so deep that we cannot understand that love of God and that is why we must understand that we have to press forward and whatever price we need to pay to have it we must be able to do it it's an example is the fact that salvation is free just as the love of God is free but even though salvation is free we must do something to receive salvation is that correct yes. praise the Lord we cannot just sit and say salvation is free and we take it the Bible tells us one that we must hear the Word of God we must be able to either hear the Word of God or they read the Word of God and as you read the word of God you must believe in that word with your whole heart in other words you must exercise faith in that word that you have read three you must confess that word you must confess it with your mouth and after you have confessed it with your mouth you will then begin to live it out in your life then you know that you have that salvation praise the Lord so if we follow what the scripture says what does it mean it does mean that there is a change of status it does mean that the old must be given up and the new must be embraced and that is the price that we are pay paying the old must be given up with and then you must embrace the new praise the Lord so that you can be complete in him having said this what are these steps therefore that we will take we will go a few of them we will be able to good because there are a lot of examples in the scripture I've divided this into two one is what we are looking at today next time we'll be able to look at the men of God in the Bible where God manifested his love upon their lives and where how God took them and show and so much poured out his life we looked at God pouring out his life through the, the, the ministration of the Holy Spirit last time God have taken to the level where he have poured out so much love in their life 
that the enemy cannot operate where they are. And that is what it means that God takes you to that level where the enemy cannot operate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is the kind of love God has shared abroad our, our hearts. And we pray that we we'll press forward and press inward to get to that level in Jesus' name. Amen. One is obedience to his decrees. Obedience to his decrees. Now, how will obedience to his decrees open the storehouse of his love for us? I'm not preaching about that in this morning, but I want us to look at Malachi. Let us just look at Malachi. Malachi 3. We look at Malachi 3. Malachi 3, we read from verse 6. We read from verse 6. If you see it, you read for me. Malachi 3. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just hold on there. He said, Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts, says the Lord Almighty. What is it? He says, Return unto me, you have gone out. And because you have departed, he has also left you. He says, When you return to him, he will return unto you. In other words, you are forsaking my love. When you have returned to my love and embraced my love, then I will open the door, the, the store half of the love unto you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Then we go, we can go further from there. But yes, sir, where shall we return? To the man of God, yes, they are not me. But yes, say, where I put up me. The size and offering. They are not to the cause. For ye are not me to this whole nation. Bring me all tight into the small house, that they may be in my house, and put me now, and put me now, hear me, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour through out a blessing, that they shall not be good enough to receive it. And I will remove the devourers for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can stop there. Now, if what we have read, can you please divide it into three? Into three, the remaining parts, the first part we have read it. One is that God says, bring the whole tithe into my house. Two, he says that there might be food in my house. Now he went further and says, try me now. That is the second part. Try me now and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not accommodate. Third, he says, I will not stop there. I will still extend my love unto you because you obeyed my decree. I will still extend this to the point that I will prevent the devourers. They will not touch your crops. Your vines in your fields will not drop their fruits. Three, before they are due. Three, it says, Then all nations will look at you, and they will call you the blessed of the Lord. Your land shall be a delightful land. Praise the Lord. I want you to say this unto yourself. My life will be a delightful land. Says the Lord Almighty, because I obeyed his decree out of the law that I have for him, I am delighted to obey his law. I am delighted to obey his decrees. Therefore, the word of the Lord will come true in my life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So just because of that obedience, he threw this challenge unto us. Try me now. And he said, when you obey this decree, I am going to pour out my love unto you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to pour out my love to the extent that you will not be able to accommodate it. And the nations will look at you 
and call you the blessed. In other words, you will become the envy of all nations. Because the love of God is poured out. God is moved to show his, to showcase his love in your life. Praise the Lord. As I said, I'm not preaching about that. But that is one of the things that God is asking us to do. To be able to provoke his love. Obedience to his decrees. Not only tithe, there are many things, commandments that God has given us. Obedience to them provokes him and moves him to demonstrate his love upon our lives. Praise the Lord. In this example, one thing, if you look at the three ingredients in it is one, obey. Two, take action. One is obedience. Two, take action. The third one is receive the law, the manifestation of the law. Praise the Lord. And so God is waiting for us. These are secrets of walking with him and seeing his blessings being poured upon our lives. And people will look at it and say, oh, God loves this one so much. God doesn't love me so much. But there are secrets that you can tap into and you find God working in your life without you necessarily working so hard to get to the level you want to get to. That shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Two, the second thing is pursue righteousness. So we have seen the change of status as a result of obedience, the access into the heavenly uh, uh, storehouse of resources. The second step we can take to provoke it is pursue righteousness with all your mind. Pursue righteousness. When we pursue righteousness, we find out that we become the beloved of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to take an example from Genesis 14. Genesis 14. If we read Genesis 14, 1 to 16, we won't be able to read Genesis 14, 1 to 16. But I want us to read 10 to 16, and then I will summarize the rest. Genesis 14. And the bread of the city, and the bread of the city was to come, and the king's Praise the Lord. Sorry. Okay, let me just take it. Thank you. Um, I will read from verse 10 to 16, and then I will summarize the rest of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the valley of Sidon was full of tar pits. At times, it says slim pits. Tar pits, in some versions, they call this slim pits. And when the kings of Sidon and Gomorrah fled, some of the men fled into, into them, and the rest fled into the hills. Or mountains. The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food. Then they went away. They also carried off Abraham's nephew, Lot, and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. A man who had escaped came and reported to Abraham the Hebrew. Now Abraham was living near the the great trees of Manre, the Amorite, a brother of Ishkol and Anna, all of whom were allied with Abraham. When Abraham heard this, that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born in his house. Take note, 318 trained men born in his house and went in pursuit as far as Dam. Verse 15. During the night, Abraham divided his men to attack them, and he routed them and pursued them as far as Hobart, north of Damascus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative lot and his possessions, together with the women and other people. Isn't that wonderful, man? The Lord will cause you to recover whatever the enemy has taken from you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, this is a story of King Kedeloma and his allies. The four kings of four nations, if you read it from verse 1, Sodom and Gomorrah were paying tithes or paying tribute to him. All of a sudden, they rebelled and refused to pay. And so this king gathered all his allies four kings and put to himself and all of them attacked Sodom and Gomorrah 
And attacking Sodom and Gomorrah, they destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and carried the men, the women, the children, and all their goods away. But unfortunately, they touched the anointed of God. Unfortunately, they touched the, be the beloved of God. And how did they touch him? They touched him because they took Lord, uh, Lord his nephew, and carried his possession, and carried everything, and went away. And the information got to Abraham. The Bible says, Abraham got together his household. 318 people born in his house. The Bible did not tell us whether they are trained or not. Whether they are trained soldiers. But Abraham has trained them in his own house. So he has brought them up in his own way. Praise the Lord. And they decided to attack the armies of four nations. Only 318 people. Praise the Lord. One thing we must note in this is to understand the fact that these are not soldiers. They are not soldiers. That brings out the love of God, the preservation of God over his own beloved. They are not trained soldiers. They are servants working in his house. Praise the Lord. Their number couldn't have outnumbered the, num the number of armies of four five nations that was impossible so they were few compared to the number of those nations but the bible says they attacked the nations and rooted them out and recovered everything nothing was lost how did they do this the bible makes it clear he said touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm why because the prophets of god the anointed of god is the apple of god's eye the anointed of God is the beloved of God. And when you touch him, God will show you that he loved that individual. God will manifest his power in the life of that individual. And tell your enemies that this is no go area because my love has been poured out in this life. Why? Because this person is a seeker of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Abraham is a man that loves God. Abraham is a man that looks for righteousness. Abraham walks with God. Praise the Lord. And then if you look at Genesis 18, Genesis 18, it tells you Genesis 18, 19 to 20. It will tell you why Abraham is so loved by God that God can vouch for him. God can vouch for him. Genesis 18, I read 19 and 20. He says in verse 19, For I have chosen him, talking to Abraham, okay, let me read from verse um, 18. Abraham will surely become a great and a powerful nation, and all the nations on the earth will be blessed through him. It tells you the love that God has poured out because the love of God activates his blessings. Abraham sought for righteousness, worked with God, and um, that brought him to the position this area we look at in the next message brought him to the position where he is so close to the heart of God and God says in that verse 18 surely we become a great nation a great and powerful nation and all the nations of the Lord of the world will be blessed through him he said for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Watch verse 20. He said, Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is grievous, that I will go down and see what they have done. Praise the Lord. As is as bad as the outcry that has reached. If not, I will know. Praise the Lord. So you can see God looking at Abraham in his position in the country where there is sin, in the vicinity of sin. Yet, Abraham was able to keep himself as a righteous man. And God can single him out in the midst of it and fought on his behalf. So God did not leave him. He fought on his behalf, went after his enemies, supported him backed him up all through the battle and recovered everything the enemy has taken and that is why i believe god 
that as we hold on to him, as we walk with him and obey his commandments, there is nothing the enemy has stolen from us that we will not recover. Because one is to defeat the enemy, two is to recover what he has taken from you. You can defeat the enemy, but what you have taken, what he has stolen, remains stolen. But you can defeat the enemy and recover everything. And that is where the love of God comes in. Because when God decides to showcase his love upon your life, he completely puts the enemy to shame. And when he decides to fight against your enemy, the enemy cannot succeed. He can't keep anything that God has blessed you with that he has stolen. You will recover everything in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we can see it. What did Hebrew, when we look at Hebrew 12, 14, it says, make every effort to be at peace with all men and, and also be holy. Two things. And he went further. He said, without which no man can see God. Holiness brings you to the point where holiness and righteousness bring you to the point where God opens his door of love upon you. The heavenly resources becomes available to us. We can tap on it. We can use it at any time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to rise up as we talk to God at this point before we go ahead. One, I want you to talk to God and say, Father, give me the grace to live righteously before you in the name of Jesus. Shall we cry to God? That grace to be righteous before him becomes very, very important. God is jealous of you. God is jealous of you and no man can touch you. No enemy, no power. God is jealous of you. Father, give us the grace to live righteously before you. In Jesus' name we are praying. And say, Father, the second point is that Abraham was so responsible. The love of God did not end in his life. His love for his own nephew was there and God backed him up. I want us to cry to God and say, Father, and say, Father, help me not to fail you in the responsibility you have given unto me to be a caretaker of my family, to be a caretaker of my brother. Cry to God, cry to God That we will not fail In Jesus name we are praying And finally say Father As you back Abraham up Please back me up Please back me up He backed him up to win that battle In Jesus name we are praying Shall we be seated If you want to see that God actually helped Abraham to win that battle You can read further Genesis 14, 17 to 20, you can see where Abraham, uh, God, that was in the scripture that it is indeed uh, God that backed him up to win that battle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, but because of our time, I want to go further from that. Psalm 5, 12, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, The Lord will bless the righteous. With favor will, will thou encompass him as a shield. That is the word of God. He said the righteous, the Lord will bless him. But not only bless, but he said he will put a shield around him. You bless him and favor him. And put a shield of defense around him. We will look at this later when we talk about the man of God that has gotten to the level where the devil cannot operate. Somebody will ask me, is there any level the devil cannot operate? Yes, of course. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. An extension of what we have seen, can be seen, we, we have just looked at, can be seen in Psalm 45 verse 7. Psalm 45 verse 7. It's a song. I don't know whether we know it. I know mommy will remember it. But he said, Thou Lord, O oh God, evermore. Scepter of thy kingdom is the scepter. The Lord, Lord, righteous and yet it said wickedness. Therefore, Lord, thy God has anointed. With the whole of gladness above thy fellows. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That 
that is seen in Psalm 45, verse 7. Let us look at the analysis of this verse. It says, the love of God in your life. If you look at it critically, the love of God in our life attracts God's love. Because he said, God loves righteousness. So it attracts God's love upon our life. But how does it attract God's love? The love of God in your life will cause you to do what? To live righteously. You love God, you pursue His stance and His status. It causes you to obey His commandments and therefore you live righteous life. At the same time, because of that love that forces you to, look, to live righteously, you hate wickedness, you hate iniquity. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there is that ingredient of God's love in your life that helps you to love God. And as you love him, it provokes God to release his anointing upon your life. He released that righteousness, provokes his love to release the anointing upon your life and anoints you with the oil of gladness. But wait a minute. Yes, because you love God and you live righteously, he said, therefore the Lord thy God has anointed thee with oil of gladness. But the question is, can the anointing operate without the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. The anointing, the outpouring of anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit. Am I correct, brethren? Praise the Lord. So there is infilling of the Holy Spirit as a result of the righteousness life the righteous life that you are living there is infilling of the holy spirit so the righteous life activates the love of god and god releases the holy spirit upon your life your life is filled with the holy spirit and then there is manifestation of his power in your life praise the lord amen so the righteousness we provoke the release or attracts the holy spirit into your life and when the Holy Spirit comes, the anointing follows. And what happens when that happens? One is that the battles of your life are fought with ease. Am I correct? Praise the Lord. Two, favor of God flows into your life ceaselessly because that is His love that is pouring upon your life. Three, your life is transformed all because of your love for Him that provokes his love in your life all because of that love you are prayed at that anointing you are prayed in that oil of gladness and your life becomes transformed what does it tell us it tells us that righteousness has a link with anointing anointing magnetizes the love of god from the throne of grace and it comes upon that individual and expresses his love in our life through the miracles that come through our lives are we together praise the lord isn't that wonderful praise the lord so we can provoke the love of god to the level that we want him to operate in our lives praise the lord another step that we can take to provoke his love is being addicted to kingdom promotions kingdom establishment kingdom development Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us, seek you the kingdom of God first and all is righteousness and all shall be added unto you. Is that correct? A person that decides to be addicted with the, word, uh, with the kingdom of God, promoting the work of God, is somebody that is committed to the work of God. Somebody that is focused to promoting the work of God. Somebody that is sold to the work of God. Praise the Lord. The growth, expansion of his work in every manifestation. This is an individual that whatever touches God, touches, the indi touches that individual. Whatever concerns God, delights this individual. And you can find out that that concerns him as well. Praise the Lord. It means that whatever moves God, moves this individual. Whatever God is interested in, this individual is interested in that thing. Praise the Lord. And what do you see when this individual comes to that point? This individual becomes somebody that occupies the heartbeat of God 
if you occupy the heartbeat of God, when you knock on heaven, what will happen? Heaven will open unto us. Praise the Lord. So you occupy the habit of God that God has to do with you. And whatever he wants to do in his dispensation, in his anointing, in his kingdom, he brings it through you. Praise the Lord. So that is one way we can do that. And when you occupy his heartbeat, if we read Deuteronomy 22, uh, 32 verse 10, Deuteronomy 32 verse 10, if you are there, please you read. Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. Deuteronomy 32 verse 10 says, it's, praise the Lord, yes. of his eye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just verse 10. Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. He says, in the desert land, he found him. Otherwise, you are in the desert land. You are in a place, a very dry place. In a barren and hollering waste. He shielded him. He comes, take care of you, shielded you, cared for you. He guarded him as the apple of his eyes. He guarded you as the apple of your eyes because you are committed to kingdom development. You are committed to kingdom uh, 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 promotion. Whatever concerns you, concerns him. And because of that, he has to pour out his love. He comes and picks you wherever you are. He guides you, he protects, he trims you, and he lifts you up and he makes you the apple of his eyes. And nobody can touch you except you first touch him. Praise the Lord. That is what the Bible is telling us. So when promoting his kingdom becomes your lifestyle, your life becomes a showcase of his love manifestations. Praise the Lord. Your, your life will become a showcase of his love because he will be there to fight on your behalf. Praise the Lord. And I pray that as we serve him in love, the manifestation of his love will not cease in our lives. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray a prayer right now. Talk to God and say, Father. Talk to God and say, Father. Please clothe me. Please clothe me with the manifestation of your law. Let my garment be the showcase of your law. Clothe me with the manifestation of your law. In the name of Jesus. You can read Psalm 7 verse 1 to 9 as well. Especially verse 8. It talks about when you are committed into doing the work of God. No wonder the Bible tells us, seek you the kingdom of God first and all these things will be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Because when you seek his kingdom, you will find his love and he will showcase you. The opposite is the case. The opposite in the case where we decide not to seek his kingdom. Where we decide not to follow him. Where we decide not to obey his commandments and decrees. We can find that in Haggai verse 1. Haggai chapter 1, sorry. Chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Haggai chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. We won't be able to read it, but you can look at it. Um, uh, the media, you can only so show us verse 7 to verse 11. Verse 7 to verse 11. But you can read Haggai where you decide not to. Verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought, when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins. Why? Every Every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withholds the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. Praise the Lord. So when we care about ourselves so much, we care about the things that concerns us, and we do not look at the promotion of God's home, building growth of God's own house. He said, you are caring about your house, and so when you struggle and struggle and gather many and you bring it home, he said, I blow them off. You know, at times I, I, I look at what happens. You find out that you can get, you can amass world and amass world and amass world. One sickness, 
takes off the entire money. Am I correct? One sickness takes out the entire money. One thing that happens to anybody in your family, in your extended family, sweeps out the money. And you ask God why. But when you focus on him and work for him, and the love of his family, the love of his kingdom consumes you, it opens the door for you to have access into the heavenly resources. And those heavenly resources pours out, it enriches you the more. Because he rebukes the enemy on your behalf. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, I want to bring it to a close. The last thing I want to discuss with us because of our time is knowledge. Knowledge of the word of God becomes very important. Knowledge of the word of God becomes very important. When you decide to love God, you can only understand whom he is. And you can only appreciate his love through the reading of the word. His love is enshrined and embedded in the word of God for us. And as you read it, you increase your knowledge of his word. You will increase in understanding of his love in your life. And as you increase in the understanding of his love in your life, so also will your love for him will increase. Am I correct? Praise the Lord. And when that love increases, and you continue to read, and you continue to pour it out on him, as you grow in his love, so will the manifestation of his love in grow in your life. Because the word that you read, there are commandments, there are decrees, you cannot speak them and they will go out and come back void. The Bible says it doesn't happen. He says his word will not go back void unto him. And so when you hold out unto that word, that word will come to pass in your life. Praise the Lord. Because God has put his signature in his word and he cannot withdraw it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So understanding of the word of God, the knowledge of the word of God, opens your understanding of him and gives you the assurance of his love and as you hold on to it it takes you to that level of manifestation let somebody shout hallelujah let somebody shout hallelujah but all this will happen when we have become children of god we have already defined that there is a universal law and there is the realms of love that is left for his own children and it is his children that can press forth. It's his child that can read the word and understand the word through the ministration of the Holy Spirit. So if you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not made him your friend, then it's difficult for you to get to the level of the love that we are talking about. And this is an opportunity for you. If you have not given your life to God, to give your life to God. It's your time to make him your friend. It's your time to step into his law at this level and begin to walk with him and begin to push in and to press forward to be able to experience the deeper levels of his law. If you have not given your life, I want you to raise your hands. Shall we stand and uh, wherever you are, just raise your hand. You want me to pray with you? Just stand up. Let us stand while we look for the hand, oh Lord. Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. If you have not given your life to Christ, just let me see your hand up. If you have not given your life to Christ, let me see your hand up. We bless the name of the Lord. If you have not given your life to Christ, please raise your hands up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 22, 37, the Bible says something. He said, Father, help me to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. Matthew 22, 37. Help me to love. It's a commandment that he has given unto us. That love that we will love him with all our hearts, with all our mind, and with all our soul. 
Praise the Lord. So I want us to talk to God, to ask God this morning. We are talking about the love of God. And we can see that we can live a great Christian life by holding on to his law and fulfilling the conditions that will lead to activating or provoking his, the manifestation of his love in our lives. I want us to pray and say, Father, help me to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, in the name of Jesus. Shall we cry to God? Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. This is the word of God. This is a, a commandment with, from God. We are talking about the love of God, but we can see what the Bible is telling us. That we should love him with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our minds. That is the word of God. That is the demand from God. That we should love him. That we may be able to occupy the realm that he wants us to occupy. That we may be able to enjoy the life that he has crafted for us to enjoy. That we'll be able to live above the, the powers of the enemy. Because when we walk in his love, we become his beloved. And when we become his beloved, no enemy, no power can touch us. His love will begin to shine for us. His love begins to manifest on our behalf. Talk to God right now. Use this verse and talk to God concerning your life. Concerning your life, ask yourself a question. How far have I loved him with my heart? How far have I loved him with my soul? How far have I loved him with my mind? Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you love him, you are seeking first the kingdom of God. When you love him according to this scripture, you are seeking first the kingdom of God. And that will move you to do the work of evangelism. That will move you to the level that he wants you to occupy. Seek you the kingdom of God. Love him first with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. That is the word of God for us. Love him above every other thing. Talk to God right now. Ask God for that grace. Ask God for that grace that you will love him above every other thing. Love him above every other thing. Above the riches. Above the cares of the world. Above the names. Above the property you have acquired. Love him with all their hearts. Let nothing steal your heart from him. Let nothing steal your soul from him. Let nothing take away your mind from him. He said, why do you care about what to wear, what to use, what to eat? Love him and he will release it unto you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Daddy, we give you glory and honor. Thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for your word that you have sent forth. Lord, we surrender ourselves into your hand. The grace to love you with all our hearts. To love you with all our soul. To love you with all our mind. Please release unto us in Jesus' name. Everything that will distract us. The things of the world. The cares of the world. That distract us from these things. From loving you. Father, I pray that you remove such cares from our lives. In the name of Jesus. As we love you, O oh Lord. I pray that, Father, there will be a demonstration of your love in our life. There will be a manifestation of your love in our life. And the world will see it and acknowledge that you are God in our life. Thank you, Father. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.